What's up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Daily Refinement. My name is Chris. I make a full-time living selling physical products online. Thank you for joining me. In this episode, we're going to go over the 10 things I wish I knew about sourcing before I started, and let's get straight into it. There are two basic models that I recommend for you when you're selling stuff online. I don't recommend drop shipping. I know that's a very profitable way of people selling things, but I don't recommend it. I recommend two different things. One is a large one-off store. This is where you can sell stuff around your house. You can go thrifting. You can get product from uh, liquidators, which are people who sell store returns or damaged goods, or you can sell from salvage. This is like insurance auctions or stuff that people throw away or house cleanouts. You can go to distributors who sell brand new products, or you can go straight to the source, my favorite, manufacturers. I recommend a physical product store of random things first. The second thing I recommend is once you have some cash flow from selling random stuff around, start working on replenishables. This is the 10 by 10 by 10 model. The reason why I recommend this and why I don't recommend drop shipping is you control your destiny. You can get your own product. I'm gonna give you an example right now of this microphone. Right now I am researching microphones because I would like to enter this game. Of my 10 by 10 by 10, I would like one of those products to be a microphone. This is the Rode Video Micro. It's a $59 mic, and I found some similar mics that do almost the same thing for as low as $7, okay? So that's interesting to me. That means there's some room to play with. There's also millions of dollars worth of camera equipment sold every single day. So when I look at this market, it's very exciting. I'm not necessarily passionate about cameras, but I do think that they're interesting. And I think it's funny when I ask people what their passion is, sometimes they say something that is not monetizable. And if that is the case, I recommend you just keep your passion, but build something on the side that is profitable. I'll give you an example. My friend Alex, he's passionate about travel vlogging. He wants to travel the world, eat amazing food, and talk about it. The thing is, last year, after making eight incredible videos with drones and incredible cinematic footage, it didn't make any money, okay? So that channel does not earn any money, but he still wanted to live that lifestyle. So he and his wife have a health and fitness blog where they talk about eating healthy and vegan uh, health plan. She's vegan, he's not. And he's a personal trainer or has that knowledge. So he goes over people's meal plans, workout plans, and they've been able to build a $10,000 a month income over the course of two years on the health and fitness side, even though they're not passionate about it. Okay, it's just a very profitable niche. In fact, anything related to diet or eating healthy or paleo or 360 diet or whatever is insane. The amount of traffic that follows that. So I always recommend you guys pick stuff that's popular, not just cheap. So I'd rather you enter in the microphone market where they sell tons, literally tens of thousands of units a day versus you enter the market of, let's say, dinner plates. Uh, dinner plates that are generic, that have no brand, would be a difficult market to enter because there's already hundreds of established competitors selling plates for three to four dollars. Even if you were to find a supplier that sold plates at one penny a piece, I still think that's a difficult market to enter. So pick popular over um, cheap. The next tip is shipping costs keep rising. And I think this is something to keep in mind as a reseller. If you're gonna do this long term, you have to recognize the shipping rates are gonna go up every single year. So what that means is it's gonna be something that's not passive. You have to keep up with this industry every single year because as markets change because of shipping, you need to be right there to find the advantage. Here's an example of a gentleman I met in Idaho. He actually married one of my friends. He does only commercial dental equipment. It only ships via freight. There's like not a single item that's under 400 pounds. That's not easy to understand. I couldn't walk into that warehouse, figure out everything is already boxed. I don't know what's in the boxes. It would be difficult for me to figure out where to look up the model numbers. How much do these items actually weigh? How do you install them? How do you repair them? I don't know any of that information. It's a very difficult niche to enter. Um, just understanding how to ship freight safely on a $5,000 dental chair, that knowledge is really limited. He was telling me that there are really only 10 other people who sell the same stuff as him in the United States. That's awesome. So I definitely recommend if, I, if you're sourcing, look for things that are not easy to ship. Next tip would be people want to do business with other businesses. This sounds pretty obvious, but 
this is one of the hacks that I have for really growing your business. Either you have a business supplier, so you have a predictable set of stuff coming in, or you have a predictable buyer. You have a few people that resell from you, so you wholesale them off inventory each month. If you have both of those equations in place, you can actually sell your company pretty easily. But just one, having a, a dedicated buyer or a dedicated supplier really saves you time. So you wanna represent yourself like a business. Get a domain name for the private label products that I'm working on. They have their own website. They're built out. That gives the person that I'm trying to buy from an idea of what I'm trying to do. And I'll give you a huge hack. I am basically cheating. I am drop shipping products that are related to the one that I'm trying to get on my website so I can get some credibility. So when I'm emailing these suppliers, it doesn't look like my store has nothing in it. And also I get an affiliate commission in the random case of somebody were to go to my site from traffic and buy something. I'm selling popular products on there that I don't have to fulfill. It's basically just an affiliate link for Amazon to deliver the product. This is a way to get yourself inside the door. These guys are getting thousands of inquiries a day and they want to work with other businesses for the same reason I mentioned before. They just want to deal with a few businesses. They don't want to deal with the person that's given up on drop shipping and selling physical goods and they want to sell your goods out of their closet. They don't want that person. They want a person that's invested with employees in a building because that person is more likely to reorder. So put yourself in their place when you're talking to them. Please don't overcomplicate trying to build a relationship with them. You're just trying to find out what happens to their goods if they don't sell it. I recommend golf courses, I recommend local hair salons. What happens to their inventory when it doesn't sell? What happens at the end of the season when the new stuff comes in? What do they do with the old goods? Do they have their own Amazon system? Probably not. They're probably just liquidating it to somebody. That somebody could be you. So when you go into a relation, into a business, say, hi, I'm ABC company, I'm the buyer, I'm looking for stuff. What, is, what happens to your inventory when um, at the end of the season? Who would I talk to about that? What is your process for becoming a distributor for you? That's the very basic verbiage, but it's as simple as that. I have a relationship with a local toy store. It was incredible. I got some, basically all these toys from the 1980s and 90s that they just left in the back stock, because, in the back stock room because they don't know how to get rid of it. They have toys that are literally 30 years old that sell for great money that are brand new. They, their system is no system. They just store it in the back at the end of the season. They clear out that, that section for the new hot toys for the season. So it just takes asking a few people, work your referrals, work the people that you know, ask them, hey, I'm a business. Um, I'm looking for physical products to sell online. Let me know who it is. And as you start to build that, you start to notice trends. When you have the private label concept going, which means you have your own product, this is why I don't recommend drop shipping. Dropshipping is 100% based on other people's products. And I want people to graduate into having your own products. That's it. That's me. I'll get off my soaps, my soapbox right now, but I really think you should have your own products. I think the power should shift away from the 10 manufacturers that sell 90% of microphones and to millions of people making a really cool microphone that sells for $40 that we get manufactured in China. And now we're actually competing with these big guys because we've got cool products with cool marketing. Okay, the next is, um, I would like you guys to look into hiring scouts. This is something I really like. I love those book businesses where they hire people to go out with the scanners, the scanners and the software, look at books. If it's a certain profitability, they bring it back to the mothership. I love that because I love more than anything growing a business to the point where you can hire somebody else to help. I think that's a beautiful thing. It's really rare. It's very hard. It's very admirable. But being able to grow your business to the point of abundance where it can support somebody else, that's really powerful to me. And also, that's more of a sniper model. You just go out and take those profitable items and you can get lucky. If you are in a category like books where you can buy something for $10 and sell it for $200, you're gonna get lucky once in a while and that's gonna pay for a lot of mistakes. A lot of trouble comes from margins being too small and having too little of a margin of error. That's what happens. The more and more profitable and, I'm sorry, the more and more popular the items are, the less margin there is because there's less and less room. This is like if you're, if you're trying to um, resell Rolex watches, it's one of the most difficult niches to get into because the wholesale is really close to retail. There's not a lot of margin there. There's not a lot of room to work with. So it's very difficult to enter. And if you were to make a mistake on one or two watches, there goes all of your margin. So it's really important. If you're gonna hire scouts to go out and find crazy home runs for you, I like that model a lot. 
because just a few home runs will pay for a lot of mistakes. And I do think you need a physical products business because it's the most stable. Uh, drop shipping is great, it can be stable. I'm just saying that you're such at the mercy of the products that you sell versus if you hire a scout to go out and find random things or you have your own products, you're just more safe. Okay, the next is my final tip and it's got a bunch of things baked into it. So if you guys are enjoying this content, please like, comment, and subscribe. Sorry for not putting out more content. I'm a little bit under the weather, but this is go local. Okay, go for Craigslist, go for the Chamber of Commerce, and start looking for the OG business people in your, in your communities that don't use LinkedIn or they don't use Google. They just rely on their business in person. Ask them what happens to their inventory when it doesn't sell. Start networking local, use Craigslist, look at the free section because, and you may want to also Google Craigslist wholesale to find out what warehouses are in your area. After that, I definitely recommend finally you go to um, offer up and you do um, let go. And then finally the next store. Those are the apps I recommend for you to find local stuff and also to find people to work for you. So hopefully this is a useful video. Like, comment, subscribe, and leave in the comment section below something that's really helped you or a question you have for me. I get back to most comments. Take care, guys.